So now let's solve part b. So in part b, we want to find the wave function. So we know that the wave function is going to come in this form. And in order to arrive at our wave function, we need to find phi of k. And in order to find phi of k, we need to go through this integral over here, which we found using Fourier transform. And then, so we're going to substitute our initial wave function into this integral to find our phi of k. And then we're going to substitute our phi of k into this integral to get our wave function. So the first step is to find what phi of k should be. So there's one integral that we're going to be using throughout this whole video, and it will be this integral over here. So Griffiths gives us a hint on how you can deal with these integrals. I'm not going to go through the mathematics in this video. I'm just going to give you the result. So if you have an integral that looks something like this, you can use integration by parts, and then you'll arrive at this expression. So I don't want to go into the mathematical details, but I'm going to be using this result in this video. So the first step is to find phi of k. And so we're just going to apply the formula. So we have the constants, we have the integral, and then we put in the initial wave function, which is equal to 2a divided by pi to the power of 1 fourth times e to the power of negative 8x squared minus ikx dx. And so this is just a direct application of this integral over here. And now you can see that we actually have an integral that looks something like this. So if, let me just pull out the constants. And then here you see that inside this integral over here, we have negative 8x squared, which matches entirely with this term. And then our v will be equal to ik. And so all we have to do is just to substitute this, uh, this formula. So this is 2 to the power of 1 fourth. So by substituting inside this formula, we arrive at, so b squared, that's just equal to ik squared. And ik squared, that's just equal to negative k squared. So we have negative k squared divided by 4a times the square root of pi over a. And so this is going to be our phi of k. And so we can clean this expression up a bit. We have this pi term over here that we can cancel out. And we have a 2 to the power of 1 half and a 2 to the power of 1 fourth. So I can just take away this, and then this just becomes this term here becomes 1 over 2 to the power of 1 fourth. And the same thing goes for here. I can just take this away. And then this a over here just becomes 1 over a to the power of 1 fourth. So you see you have a 2 to the power of 1 fourth, pi to the power of 1 fourth, and an a to the power of 1 fourth. So I can just combine them together to get 2 a pi to the power of 1 fourth times e to the power of negative k squared divided by 4 a. So this is our phi of k. So the next step is that we're going to substitute this phi of k into this expression here to arrive at our wave function. So let's do just that. So our wave function is equal to 1 over 2 pi. And then I'm going to substitute in phi of k indirectly. So let me just keep the constants outside of the integral. And then we will have our integral from negative infinity to infinity. And then we have e to the power of negative k squared divided by 4a, and then multiplied by this term, e to the power of i kx minus, minus h k squared divided by 2m times t dk. And then by rearranging this integral, you're going to see that we can, we can actually apply this result once again. And so you see that this is in terms of k. So let's just uh, isolate the terms with a, with a k squared involved. So we have negative 1 over 4a. Uh, so this has a k squared. And then we also have negative i h bar divided by 2m and then times t. And then this will be multiplied by k squared. So let me just pull the negative sign on the outside. So you, if you would just compare these two formulas, you can see that this whole term here will correspond to the a in this integral. So this is all, this will be the a. And then for the other term, we have plus i k i x k. So I'm leaving the k at the back because this is in terms of dk. And so you see that this i x here will be equal to our b. So there's actually a negative b. So our b is actually equal to negative i x. So now we can, in order to solve this integral, we can just substitute it into this formula. 
so let me just copy out these constants. So we're going to substitute all this into our formula. So we have e to the power of b squared. b squared is just equal to negative ix squared, so that's just equal to negative x squared. So we have negative x squared divided by 4 times a. So 4 times this giant ugly term over here. So this is going to be the e term. And then we have the square root of pi divided by a. So we need to copy out this ugly term once again. And so there you have it. So we're basically done over here. So all we have to do now is to really just, uh, so this is basically the answer. So all we have to do now is to just to clean this up a bit. So one way to clean this up to arrive at, we're going to try to arrive at this expression. So this expression looks pretty neat. So let's try to rearrange things a bit to arrive at that expression. So we can do this by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 4a. So this 4a is going to go inside here and it's going to simplify things a bit. And then this 4a is going to combine with these with these constants over here. So you see there's a 2 to the power of 1 fourth and a 2 to the power of 1 half. So these combine together to give you 2 to the power of 3 over 4. And at the top this square root of 4 just becomes just becomes 2. So you see you have 2 divided by 2 to the power of 3 over 4, so that just becomes 2 to the power of 1 fourth. And then you can see that you have a square root of a and an a to the power of 1 fourth, so that just cancels out to give you a to the power of 1 fourth. So we've dealt with these 2s and these a's. And then you can see that there's a square root of pi, so these just cancel out. And then we have a pi to the power of 1 fourth in the denominator. So another way to write this out is to write this as 2a divided by pi to the power of 1 fourth. So that's, so we've dealt with all these constants. So now over here, we have this giant uh, square root term. So I'm just going to multiply the 4a inside. So we have 1 plus 2i a h bar divided by m t. So we've considered these terms. And then we're going to do something similar for here as well. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a to so that this denominator will look identical to this one. So we have e to the power of, so instead of e to the power of something, you can see that I've ran out of space. So I'm just going to use this exp notation. So this means, so if I write exp uh, a, that means e to the power of a. So it's just another way to express this idea. So we have negative ax squared, that's the numerator, and the denominator we have 4a, so that just becomes 1 plus 2i a h divided by m t. And so you can see that this denominator is identical with this one. And so there you have it. This is the, the term that Griffiths wants us to find.